the blonde news reporter, he was standing in the street with his shirt off and his chest hairs, there was three hairs on his chest and they were all in the form of sixes. Six, 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 everywhere. Everywhere. Let's hear a few minutes of Project Censored's movie. In this section, they talk a bit about why and how our news gets censored. I don't have the video, just the audio, but I do recognize some of the voices. Among them are Noam Chomsky, I think Dan rather, and at the end, the late Howard Zinn. Let's have a listen. Implicitly, we have a concentrated, top-down corporate media system that's primarily oriented to make money and provide entertainment and is increasingly a propaganda machine for the military, media, industrial complex of the United States. The stations used to be uh, family-owned. Guess what? They're all gone. They're all owned by multinational corporations. The country is run by a few big interests looking out for themselves and not for the benefit of the population. Well, the corporate media does it by the book. They do the time-life approach. They go down the middle. They never say anything too uh, controversial. If you try, like, to criticize Westmoreland in Vietnam, you get into a whole scandal like Dan Rather did, and you don't get away with that stuff. So as a result, they, they barrier everything to death, and it becomes sanitized and boring. The way it works is, and I've been in these conversations, this is how it works on the inside. You have the responsibility for a newscast. And every morning the school board lights up. Here are the demographics from last night. Here's what you did with um, Network X. Here's what your competition did. By the way, they handed your head to you last night uh, because we think they concentrated on the story most people wanted to hear. Paris Hilton, murder case on the West Coast. Uh, you insisted on leading with something, an international story. And here's what Network Y did. That's the way the pressure works on you. Censorship is one of our most serious problems, if not the most serious problem. And I think we have to look at censorship as taking many different forms. But there's this much more subtle form of censorship, which is exercised every day by the mainstream, mainstream press. Mainstream press is a good way to put it. Uh, where, the, where, where are the owners? censor it. I talked recently to a, a, a very high up reporter in one of the major U.S. newspapers, the New York Times, and he said, you know, I'm not censored. I can write anything I want and turn it into my editor, but he decides what to publish and what not to publish. And if he doesn't publish any of my stories for a couple of weeks, I lose my job. So theoretically, I'm not censored. Nobody puts black lines through sentences. It's not the old-fashioned form, but he's censored. Fear permeates every newsroom in the country. One of the fears is that our circulation will go down, or our ratings will go down, or demographic will go down, and I, I do not accept myself in this criticism. It is, listen, somebody else is running with a story that I don't think ought to be the lead story. But for 10 days, they've been on a ratings climb and we've been on a ratings decline. And the reason entertainment values have reached the point where they've almost tsunami-like overwhelmed news values is this reality. If you continue to lose demographics, you continue to lose in the ratings, uh, you probably aren't going to last. Good evening, and welcome to CMN, the corporate mainstream media news network. I'm Hallie Burton. In today's news, Americans are breathing a sigh of relief as Congress has agreed to bail out our struggling banking industry, saving our country from a deeper recession and economic collapse. In other news, Lindsay Lohan was implicated for allegedly stealing jewelry. And Charlie Sheen, he's back in rehab. The corporations control the world today. There was a time not so long ago, a few hundred years ago, when geopolitics of the world was, was controlled by religious organizations. And then it was governments. And you, could, you had some totalitarian governments, you had some democratic governments, but governments really ran things. Today it's the big corporations. The antitrust uh, safeguards that were, had been put there around the third, back in the 30s had been completely dismantled or ignored by the courts. So we need to go back to basics and enforce our own rules. 
the elites have gotten to a point where they're above the rules, as we are seeing now with the economy. And that's obscured by our media, who are complicit and part of the same clique. And we need to dismantle all of that through reforms and just say, no, no, let's go back. The rules actually say this. We need to enforce this. Welcome back to the Project Censored show. This is Mickey Huff in studio with Peter Phillips. For the last segment of the show today, in the last five so odd minutes we have, we'd like to call attention to a couple of guys that have been making a film uh, about media censorship. So that's certainly right up our alley. In 1996, Congress passed the Telecommunications Act, which led to a gold rush of media mergers and takeovers in the United States. Today, Fewer than five major media corporations dominate U.S. news and information systems. As a student of Project Censored, we discussed the spin that corporate media used when describing the Telecommunications Act of 1996. It was supposed to create competition among media corporations, ultimately benefiting the American public with increased relevant news. You've been traveling around the country for the last five years now, uh, getting this kind of footage, right? And you're putting together this story of, of media, media censorship, propaganda. The fact that we have censorship in our media is not an occurrence that happens because of ignorance. It is something that happens because of deliberate policy. What the corporate media do, basically, is they parrot the arguments of the administration. They don't challenge the administration, they report the administration, but in reporting them, they are giving the administration uh, the airwaves, they're giving them the platform, uh, they're crowding out everything else, they're not reporting the uh, views of the opposition, and, uh, and so all that the public gets is the statements of the political leaders of the country. 